Perfect, and we will go ahead and get started. So thank you guys for joining us um, for an overview of the DBA program. Um, like I said, my name is Lindsay. I work with all DBA students during the application process. And um, then, as I mentioned before, we do have the program director um, joining us as well today. Um, did you want to speak a little bit about yourself, Julie? Sure. Um, Lindsay, can, can I just get an idea for, I can't really see um, how many uh, candidates do we have on line here. Yep, so we actually have five um, currently attending and then this is being recorded so we're going to send it out to everybody. Um, so in case I know some people were working on different time zones might not be able to make it so hopefully we'll be able to uh, connect with a lot more students as well. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Well again everybody thank you for joining us today. Um, my background is kind of varied. Um, I did graduate from Johnson & Wales University and then went away for a while and, you know, went into industry, had some varied experiences there. I've worked in um, process improvement for some large companies, financial services, and also had my own businesses as well. My more recent um, or later part of my career, I should say, has been in um, HR and org development, which is obviously the concentration of this program. And I've done different aspects of that as well, training and development, um, the learning side, and then also process side. So um, as far as Johnson & Wales goes, I have been with Johnson & Wales since 2004. So um, next month we're coming up in 16 years. And same kind of pattern at Johnson Wales, very varied. Um, I've been involved with curriculum development and I've been in the classroom for a lot of years and I am now the program director for the DBA. I've been involved with this since the beginning. Uh, we put together a really great team and developed the courses, the program, and we are currently recruiting for our third cohort, as you know. So we're very excited about this. Perfect. Thank you, Julie. Um, just to kind of give you guys a little bit. Oops. Um, here is a view of the agenda. Just kind of go over what we're going to do today. A little brief overview about JWU 101 um, and then focusing a little bit more on the DBA program, the advantages of the online DBA program, which is the only way this program is offered actually. I'll go over the admission overview and then any questions you guys have, just let us know um, using the chat feature because your microphones are muted for the presentation today. But let's go ahead and get started. So here's an overview of Johnson & Wales. We have been around for over 100 years. We were originally founded as a business school. Our flagship campus is in Providence, Rhode Island, and we've expanded since then. We have a few campuses now, um, branch campuses, North Miami, Florida, Denver, Colorado, the Charlotte campus. And then we started to offer online courses in 2008. And then the College of Online was officially formed in 2013. Um, it started off with just an MBA in hospitality program. And now we actually offer over 80 different programs um, online, which is great. So to focus a little bit more on the DBA program specifically, here is some information just about the program requirements. Um, Julie, do you want to chime in here? I can kind of go over stuff for a little bit. It, it's up to you. Um, do you want to walk through like you normally would and then I can chime in or do you want me yeah. to? Okay, that'd be perfect. Um, so program requirements, it's 18 courses. It is a three year cohort program. So courses are eight weeks long. Um, you take one at a time and then you'll jump right into the next course. So the program does go year round. So fall, spring and summer, just something to be aware of. And then um, we do require a minimum GPA of at least a 3.0 while you are enrolled in the program. Um, and as you complete your courses, um, as you move along in your program, that's when you'll start working a little bit more focused on your dissertation topic and, you know, writing that. Um, Julie, did you want to add anything just to this quick slide? Yeah, so, um, you know, Lindsay just mentioned, so the dissertation is obviously a major part of any doctoral program. 
and you, if you've looked at the application materials, you probably saw in there that, you know, we ask applicants right from the beginning if you have any ideas on research that you'd like to focus on. And, um, you know, we don't obviously set anything in stone right from the beginning, but it's something that we feel is a differentiator for our program where we want students to begin thinking about it right from the beginning so that they can vet ideas through their courses and look at topics from the different angles of the courses so that by the time you finish your coursework you're not starting a dissertation from scratch you have um, a, a very solid base of literature you've practiced the research in some of your courses you've vetted out proposals so when you get to that dissertation start point, um, you don't go through the agony of finding out there's not enough literature for a topic you're interested in or um, figuring out how to do the research. You've basically been practicing all along so that you're ready um, to dive you know, uh, deeply into your dissertation topic and begin your research um, at that point. Thank you. Julie, it looks like we actually had a question come in about dissertation. Like when, when do students start, you know, formally working on it in the program? Sure, great question. So um, like I just mentioned, you know, you're sort of informally working on it throughout the entire time. There are 18 courses in the program. 14 of them are traditional courses, um, you know, in the org behavior or development research courses, things like that. Four of them are actual dissertation courses. And again, this is a major differentiator for our program because usually not only do most programs have you start your dissertation at the end, sort of start that thinking process, even though somewhere along the line, someone, your advisor may tell you, um, start thinking about it. It's officially the process begins at the end and there's usually not a lot of structure to it. You're sort of released into dissertation time and this is the place where many doctoral students fall off across the board, regardless of what type of doctorate they're going for. Um, so many people out there are walking around as ABD, but not full doctoral um, you know, completion. So in order to get you to full DBA status, uh, we've developed these four courses. The first one begins in fall one of year three, and you start with your proposal. Prior to that, you'll be working on a prospectus um, from about the end of spring of year two through that summer, and then um, going officially into dissertation process with that first proposal course in fall of year one. And the expectation is you're working closely with your advisor and your committee through year three um, with a hopeful completion or intended completion at the end of year three, which is August of whatever year that is. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julie. All right. So moving along, advantages of earning your DBA. Um, so I actually get this question a lot um, in the admissions um, chatter, I suppose. Um, you know, why a DBA compared to a PhD and just comparing all the different terminal degrees? Um, our DBA, our, the curriculum was very, very thoughtfully planned out, uh, made for the working um, professional. It's, it's relevant, it's career focused, it's application of research, um, which is great. As I mentioned, one course at a time, each course is eight weeks long, so totally manageable while you are working um, and continuing to focus on your career. Expected three year completion. And we do have one concentration that we offer right now, which is an organ organizational development. Um, so that's important to note. And then we also get a lot of questions regarding accreditation. We are accredited by Nietzsche, formerly NIA. Some people are more familiar with that term, so I just like to mention that. But it's the New England Commission of Higher Education. So um, another great thing about our DBA program is that it's 100% online. You never need to come to campus. There's no um, weekends on campus or week-long intensive courses or anything. Everything is done 100% online. Um, Lindsay, can I chime in for one minute? Please do. So a DBA versus the PhD, um, sometimes there's some misconceptions that a DBA does not require research. A DBA, just like EDDs, PsyDs, most doctoral programs are going to require research. 
the difference is in the focus and the type of research that's done. So in the DBA program, you will be asked all along in your coursework, you know, how does this relate to your industry, your organization? What problems are you seeing? What approach would you take to try to solve these programs? Let's talk about that or let's figure out through this course what might be an option here and sort of solidifying the problem statement even further and an approach to potentially figure out how to start solving that problem. So it's, I like to say that the DBA is the intersection of industry and academia because it's not just doing research for the you know, joy of doing research, which is wonderful, but it's to solve problems and to really be used um, both from an academic perspective, but within industry. Awesome, thank you. Uh, I just wanna pause here. Does anybody have any questions on anything that we've gone over? I know it's been a lot of information kind of thrown at you all at once. So I just wanna give you a chance to ask any questions. Ooh, good question. How many students have completed the program in three years and how long has this program be offered? How, how long has the program been offered? Um, so Julie, I, I, can, yeah, I can take this. So um, 2018 was actually our first cohort. Johnson & Wales, um, you know, has been around since 1914. Um, we started as a small business school in Providence, Rhode Island, but for about the last 20 years, we've had um, a doctoral program, the EDD, so Doctorate of Education. Between 1914 and about 20 years ago, you know, we really evolved from uh, the small business school to all kinds of programs and obviously being a full-fledged university. So the EDD has been a very strong program for us. It is in residence only on the ground in Rhode Island. Um, and it's it has really fueled the school systems um, for um, education administration. So we decided a couple of years ago that we were ready to determine what kind of doctoral program should be next for Johnson & Wales. And after doing all the research, we determined it was a doctorate of business administration to take something that we're strong in. And um, really Johnson & Wales is also known for application. So we thought a DBA would be perfect for us. So our first cohort is currently ending, they're in their um, second summer, they're ending year two, they'll be heading into year three uh, at the end of August. So we have not had any completion yet. I can tell you that our rates, um, our retention rates are, are very good. Any doctoral program that you go into, you're going to have fall off. Um, you have an, an immediate fall off, which is very typical. People sign up, it sounds good on paper, and then all of a sudden the first week of classes begin and people say, oh my goodness, what did I get myself into? So you have usually immediate fall off and then you'll have some fall off throughout for different reasons, usually personal reasons. Um, but our attention is doing very well. We currently have 11 students in the first cohort and our second cohort has 17 students and they're going strong. Our um, class sizes are important to us. We want to make sure that faculty are able to manage the number of students in a class and provide extensive and relevant feedback. So in order to do that, we do not want large uh, cohort sizes. So our goal is to, you know, usually be somewhere around 20, but a little less um, as the fall off happens and then going down uh, per cohort. That, that number is pretty comfortable um, for us and for the faculty. Awesome, thank you. And while you were speaking, we got another question in, and I hate to throw it at you again, but no, no, uh, <laughs> when you mentioned the program is career focused, can you talk more about that? Does the program use case study methods in the teachings? So the program itself was developed basically to have um, the co a combination of courses that should be in a doctoral program in terms of research and, and kind of the, the standards and then to focus in the DBA um, content in, in terms of our concentration for org development. Each faculty member who is currently teaching in the DBA, and this won't always be the case as we grow, but each faculty member currently is the faculty member who designed the course. So the great thing, um, as you can imagine, in I think any line of work, you know, 
it takes a few times to run through something before you really have it down. So the benefit for us right now of having the, the people who develop these courses teaching them is that we are always debriefing after a course runs. What can we do better? Can we fix something? Um, you know, where should we go with this? And I'm very happy to say we haven't found any major oh no things that we have to fix, um, but we certainly have been able to stay current and um, keep our our courses where they need to be. Uh, Lindsay, what was the second part of that um, question? Um, do you use case studies um, in the teachings? Oh, case studies. Okay, I, I didn't hear that. Sorry, and I couldn't see the question. Um, yes. So some sometimes we do. Every faculty member chooses the method um, when they develop the course that works best for that content. So. There are some case studies. Uh, we do talk about case study research as well in qualitative, um, but it's, it's not something to say that it's a you know sole case study method. It just depends on the content, but there are some case studies. Um, one example I can give you in our um, uh, accounting and finance course, which tends to be some you know tricky for some people who that's not their strong suit, their background. And so uh, Dr. Pumplowski, he does case study simulations in that class, which are really great to help students who aren't necessarily, you know, that's not their, their strongest area. It, it kind of helps them because it puts sort of reality to it instead of just equations. Does that help? Yes, absolutely. Anytime, I feel like any application is, you know, helpful in understanding, but um, definitely answered the student's question. Um, oh, good question. When daytime do students typically meet? Sure. Um, so um, it, it, as Lindsay mentioned, it's an online only program. It is asynchronous. So there is never a mandatory session where all students have to be online at the same time. Faculty members will hold, you know, Zoom sessions or whatever. Um, but they are never mandatory and most of the time, depending on what it's for, most of the time they're going to be recorded and put into the class. So if you couldn't make it, you can see it. A typical week begins on a Monday and the standard is usually on a Thursday evening you will have some part of a discussion due and then the rest of the work is typically due on Sunday. Our deadline times on Thursday and Sunday are 11.59 p.m. Um, so your week is running Monday through Sunday night, and then the next week begins on Monday. The actual sessions are typically seven weeks and two days, so we call them eight-week sessions, but really that last week is just Monday, Tuesday, and that's reserved for, um, you know, sort of a course ending, whether it's a, a presentation or, uh, you know, it varies by course, whether it's a response to another student for some work that you're reviewing of theirs. Um, it, it varies. Um, there was something I was going to say, just left my mind. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So the seven weeks and two days, and I don't know, hopefully it'll come back to me. Oh, you know what I want to say? The, as far as not having synchronous timing or in-residence sessions, we are really excited. This summer, we are hosting our first live virtual DA dissertation boot camp. So that's going to be on July 25th and we're bringing all the students in that first cohort together for six hours on a Saturday for different sessions. Again, not mandatory, um, very helpful and very, the students are very excited to have this, um, you know, time where they have the option to come together. The faculty members are going to be present, advisors will be present um, and we're going to walk through sessions to help them prepare to move out of their perspectives and into their proposals. Awesome, thank you. Um, all right, I am gonna click, oh, hold on one more second. Uh, new question that came in, the curriculum is stated as being focused on organizational development. What does that specifically mean to JWU? I'm not sure I understand. Okay, so in terms of how or maybe um, or development. So um, just to give you a sampling of some of the courses that are sort of designated for that, obviously we have the org behavior side. Um, we talk about advanced strategies in organizational development. We talk about decision making. Um, 
leading change on a large scale uh, transformation basis. It's basically uh, our program is sort of almost two targets um, in mind. We have people in academia who are interested in needing the credentials to continue to teach in higher education in business. A DBA will, um, you know, is, is what is needed for many business areas, not, not all, but for many. Um, the second and really most prominent track is industry. Uh, people that are in management and looking to climb up the ladder, get into that executive level. Our program is basically the OD focus to help solve those problems and manage the organization. The people side of it, but the people process side of it as well. So in the cultural side, so really um, helping people to secure the skills, the problem solving skills to continue to move up the, the ladder. Awesome. I, I hope that answered your question. If not, please, please ask. Um, but hopefully that answered your question. I am going to jump to the next slide now. I'm at Lindsay, I see, I see another question. Um, oh, yeah. So I'm not sure why I, I, I can only see um, questions from one person. So thank you. But uh, let's see, what does a typical syllabus include? Are there group projects, online final exams, quizzes, or is it primarily individual research papers? Okay, so great question. So it, again, varies um, by the content. So for instance, there is a business analytics class that is terrific, but in order to make sure that students are understanding and moving forward in the, the program, the, the software program that's used. Um, there are sort of self-check types of quizzes to make sure that everybody's on track. So you'll see things like that in some of the classes. Um, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head with sort of a structured uh, quiz, uh, you know, structured quizzes in there. Um, most of it is really going to be about reading and writing. And we do a lot of work with students at the beginning of the program because many students come into a doctoral program either having been away from academia for quite a while or not having a strong foundation in academic writing. And it is difficult to get used to if it's not something you're doing all the time. So we spend a lot of time working with students at the beginning of the program on the academic writing piece. It is individual papers. Um, there are, is a lot of peer review and let's see, projects. Generally, you're not going to see group projects. There's one course I can think of, um, the Advanced Strategies in Org Development, where you do collaborate for an assignment, but your grade is not based on the work of other people. So there's collaboration, but not grade dependent. Um, one thing that we haven't really mentioned, sort of kind of piggybacks from this, there is a lot of interaction between students in the cohorts um, and the faculty members. For being an online only program, we have so much interaction. And I think any of our students will tell you that's, that makes this program really uh, wonderful for them because if given you know, all the time in the world, it'd be great to meet in a classroom, but not everybody has the time to be able to do that. So having constant interaction with your peers and your faculty members really um, is, a, a, I think, a strength of our program. Um, even once you're out of a faculty member's course, there's, you know, people, if, if you happen to gel with a certain uh, professor, you know, going back, bouncing ideas off of them all the time. Um, so, so there's a lot of connection. Awesome. So you're not doing it alone. You, right. you, uh, you have other people to, uh, you know, help you through and bounce ideas off of, like you were saying. Um, I did just want to, I switched over to the admissions process, which um, I know a few of you are in the process of going through right now. So you, uh, you know it, but just to kind of go over it briefly in case you haven't filled out an application for the upcoming term. Um, first, it's free to apply. It takes about uh, maybe about 10 minutes or so to fill out the application. It's available online. Next, we were um, all transcripts need to be submitted. I can send you transcript release request forms to help request those transcripts 
for you. Not all institutions allow it, but we do make an attempt of that for you. So if you need transcript release request forms, just let me know. And then other documents to support your application, the personal statement, um, current resume, and two letters of recommendation. Um, this is really where you get to kind of show the admissions committee why you're awesome. Um, <laughs> um, the personal statement does have, I believe it's three parts um, that the committee is looking for you to focus on. It's about 1,500 words, so nothing too crazy. Um, a copy of your current resume, really highlighting leadership experience um, on that resume. And then two letters of recommendation as well. Um, after all of those documents are submitted, I will let you know and I will send your file for review by the admissions committee and all qualified applicants will be invited to participate in an interview um, via Skype or Zoom. Julie, do you want to add anything to that regarding the admissions process kind of overview? Sure. So the admissions team, um, Lindsay is, you know, on the admissions side doing the processing and everything for us, which is really helpful. And Lindsay's great to work with. Um, from our perspective and student or applicant perspective. So that process usually goes pretty smoothly. Once a file is completed and turned over to me, we have um, a team, it's myself and three faculty members, and we review all the material and make a decision whether or not to move forward with an interview. If we move forward with an interview, um, it would be myself and one of the faculty members. And then from there, again, we debrief and make, you know, send our decision to the committee and or our recommendation to the committee and the dean. And he reviews everything. And then a final decision is sent back to Lindsay. So from the time you uh, complete your file, it's probably within about 10 days, usually less, that you would hear um, from me if we move forward with the interview process. And then from there, it's about within 10 days that you would have a final decision. So we try to move very quickly. We try to keep our interview and um, review team small so that we have consistency and we can bring in students who are a good fit for our program and the cohort that we're building um, and make sure that we're a good fit for them as well. Perfect. Does anybody have any questions on the admissions process here? I know there's a few other things on the screen, you know, financial aid, filling out the FAFSA. Um, you can fill out the FAFSA at any time. You just add Johnson & Wales as a school. You don't need to wait to be accepted or fill or um, enrolled in a class. You can fill that out at any time. Um, and then, of course, we don't require any standardized test scores for this program um, as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click to the next screen just because it has some contact information. So I wanted to leave this up on the screen just while we answered any final questions that we might have here. Um, we are currently still accepting applications for our fall 2020 start. The deadline, as you can see right there on the bottom is July 15th for submitting documents. Um, but if you do have any questions or maybe something that pops into your head a little bit later, there's my phone number, um, email address, um, Julie's contact information as well. So any questions you do have, please feel free to reach out. We want to make sure you have all the information you need to make, you know, the right decision for you. Um, I do want to be respectful of your time, but does anybody else have any other questions for us right now? All right, getting crickets, so I'm not gonna hold you guys here. Um, but like I said, anything pops up, please let us know. Um, but thank you so, so much for joining us. Hopefully this was informative to you. You got some of your questions answered and we look forward to speaking with you. Oh, go ahead. All right, I guess we're all set. Everybody, thank you so much. Have a great day.